Right guys, we've been trying to keep this secret as long as we can. We obviously had to put the stickers on the car. You've seen that already. As you guys have probably guessed, one of the main channel sponsors going forward is going to be Infinity Wax. And we've come up to Infinity Wax in Glenrothes today to show you exactly how the products are put together, where it all started, how they're shipped, and uh, find out a bit more about them. So let's get inside and we'll show you how all the Infinity Wax products are made. This is something the guys at Infinity Wax are working on at the moment. This is going to be their trade stall, um, so it's going to be like a shop front for people on the trade to come in and be able to pick up the products direct from Infinity Wax, uh, which will be great. This is a this is all going away, but this is just some of the range of products. This is a flooring that we really want to get for the garage. Right, the tough tiles. This so the I don't think they're tough tiles. I think they're a similar version. No. Mm. Awesome product, awesome. And of course you've got your hex lights as well. All the stuff that we want in our place, but it'll come eventually. I think Michael and Ollie are doing something at the moment, but let's go for a wee nosy a bit. We'll just go for a wee snip a bit and we'll show you some stuff. So Michael's already showed us around here. This is basically where all the Synergy products, all your ceramic coatings and all your waxes come. Uh, these are all made on site, we'll show you these in a bit, but everything's hand finished in here, so every product will come through here, they'll open it up, they'll check it, they'll make sure the consistency of the wax is okay, they'll make sure there's no cracking, make sure it looks pretty, then it'll be put together, labelled up by hand, they're, they're really, they're perfectionists here, aren't they Charlie? Aye, they get everything perfect. Yeah. Michael really wants everything to be as perfect as possible because he's... Obviously, Michael, we'll get the story off of Michael, but Michael started this business from his garage. He actually told us that he sold a Mark IV Supra for £1,500. Oh. If only we knew back then. If, if only we knew Michael. £1,500 for a Mark IV Supra, and he took £500 of that and started Infinity Wax. And 10 years later, well, they own this whole building, the bit out the back. We'll probably, we'll show you as much as we can, but yeah. 10 years of hard graft and the products speak for themselves. Right, so coming to this way, you've got a wee poster up on the wall where they sponsored Jason Blair for the BTCC last year. It was a whole team, it was a BT ra uh, it was BTC a team. racing team. But they, it was mega expensive, you know what we heard, and they only got four wee stickers on each corner. One on each car. corner of the car, yeah. Right, come this way. But that, it was quite a good year to do it, because it was Plato's last year. It's a bit of a maze here, isn't it? Yeah. Who, who are we being followed by? Michael. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is oh, this is where we need Michael actually, because I don't really yeah. know how to talk about this, but we'll probably get Michael in here. But this is a uh, this is one of their mixing rooms. Right. So this is your indoor mixing area. So this, yeah, this, this room serves a couple of purposes, but one of them is um, we do things like detail sprays, tire coat, tire candy. Yeah. Um, those the kind of water based. Yeah, finale is another favourite. You guys love that as well. We've had loads of orders on that. And the rapid detailers as well. That was the ones we that are going on the ball with now, actually. Yeah. So. So basically, any of these water-based polymer products, yeah. um, we keep these at a, like a constant temperature indoors. Um, right. It's more for like the raw material side. So in winter, yeah. if it was hard frost the raw materials would go off very quickly if they were in like an unheated unit. So yeah. they're kept in here, so we're always about between 15 and 20 degrees in here. Right. Um, basically what we do, we've got quite a, it's a quite a simple but efficient setup. So what we have here, uh, this is a high shear mixer. Um, and how this works, we basically, we lower it down on the winch inside one of the IBCs. And say we're doing rapid detailer, for example, we'll, we'll fill that up with uh, the materials that we need. Some of them go in later in the stage of the mixing process. Right. Um, there's about three going right at the start. We'll lower this right down, so it's designed, it's got the right kind of uh, size here to go into the top of the tank. Um, and what this will do, this mixes up to 18,000 RPM, so very, very high speed. We've got an impeller here, um, 
And what that does is drives like a vortex around the whole IBC. So right. although this is quite small, you might think that's not going to reach the edges of the mixture. Yeah. It creates this vortex inside um, and it draws everything right up into the middle here. Right. Um, now you can maybe see there's, there's like holes in the side. And what this does is it works by essentially when the material is taken up here, um, it's crushed against the walls of the mixing head, right. forced out of the, comes out of the holes here. All right. Drawn in here and then out of here. Um, and what that does, that creates like a very stable uh, emulsion. Um, so essentially it means we can create an, an emulsifier product without adding any other chemicals in. Right. So if you were to mix, say, like mix oil and water together, yeah. to do that you would need an emulsifier. Yeah. With this, you, can, you don't need an emulsifier. Yeah. Because you're smashing the molecules together at such a high speed, right. it will create a stable emulsion. From a manufacturing standpoint, um, these little mixers are quite expensive, but what it does do, it, it saves a little bit of cost on the long term because you don't have to add in an emulsifier. Um, but it also means you're not having to put in, some of these emulsifiers are made from kind of nasty materials. Um, so it means you don't need to put that in the product, so it's safer. Um, and to be honest, it just makes, you know, you're, you're able to, if you think about the material that goes into it, you're, be able, you're able to put the maximum amount of raw material, usable raw material in there, and you're not having to shave off, you know, up to maybe 5% from an emulsifier. Right, right. So you can make that product 5% stronger. Yeah. It doesn't sound like much, but that can have a really significant difference, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is just one of them. We've got several of these. We've got um, a much, much bigger one out the back as well. And we have, in fact, the one you've not seen, um, the, the big one, the three right. ton mixer, I'll, I'll maybe show you that actually. All right, okay. Um, so, cool. Right, guys, let's show you where everything starts in the process. We'll start by going into one of the labs, and I think that's an office. I think Charlie and Michael are in the lab at the moment. Here we go. Charlie and Michael are in here already. So, what we're going to do today. Um, we're not going to make anything hazardous, it's just going to be a simple quick detailer. But we're going to go through the process from start to finish. So you're going to choose the colour. I think you're actually thinking orange already. Orange, yeah, for home milks. It's grapefruit and sugar cane. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah. If you want, just take the lid off and have a smell of the cap and that'll give you a... Oh, gingerbread. It smells great in here, though. <laughs> as soon as you open that cupboard door, it's, uh, it's nice, yeah. So, we've got three here that you like to look up. So let's see, uh, bubble gum. So this one, that's it's like the pink bubble gum. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean, like that. Yeah. It's not one that we use us normally to the tester. Right. This one of one. One, one. one. Mandarin one. spice saffron. I think that one's probably really good for sure. It does a bit, yeah. Um, right. Okay. Well, we can come to that. Yeah, we can get to that part towards it, anyway, so that's not a problem. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is we've mixed up the, the base, so there's two secret ingredients in this, yeah. Right. Um, the rest of it we'll go through, but I think it's cool and we'll explain Can it. Can you know the secret ingredients? Yeah. No. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this, first of all, I'm going to just carefully pour this in. Up to the So this product here, this is a a wetting agent um, and a wetting and spreading agent um, you've got to be careful when you say that around it sounds a bit dodgy doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what this does basically this allows the product to spread evenly on the panel um, and it also creates like a bit of a darkening effect mm -hmm. so when you see when you put rapid detailer or another qv on there um, you, you will see if you put a bit of masking tape down the panel you'll see like an obvious difference in the darkening of the paint and that's actually this product that kind of creates the gloss a little bit to oh, a certain yeah. extent yeah um now it's very important that you only put a small amount of this in because if you put too much it actually kills the hydrophobics oh. um, so what you could end up is if you if you added a lot of this you end up with a really glossy uh, really nice product but it would have no hydrophobics whatsoever right um so, so it's all about the beading in it so this one here just going to start this the mix on this So, as you can see here, turn that down a touch. So, this has a magnetic stirring system, pretty common in most uh, laboratory setups. Just turn that down a little bit. Okay, so you've got your gloves on. 
Mm. Uh, so we've got 0.5 mil of this. If you want to pop that in, into there with a whole lot, then that'll start mixing. What am I doing with this? Um, I'll just take that just now and I'll attach it back to the side of the <laughs> Okay, so while that's doing its thing in there, um, we'll look at some of the other ingredients. This one here is probably, like you mentioned about beads, this is the, this is the one that gives you beading, so this well, is important here. Put loads of it in. <laughs> so what we're going to do, there's a lot more of this actually goes in, so actually it's going to be about 20 mil. But you say you want more, do you want to go 25? I will go 25. So. Maximum beading effect. Yeah. I wouldn't put any more than 25 in. There you go, you got that. So you'll notice that this it starts to thicken the product up and touch when that goes in as well. Mm -hmm. That's fine, that'll just uh, spin away there in the background. The next one, again, it's not a very exciting one, this, but it's very important. So this is actually a preservative. Um, so this is just going to stop mushrooms growing out the product in a few right, months now. So this one again, it's a small amount. See when you did this at the car show? Yeah. Uh, did everybody else get to add in? And sim similar sort of idea. Um, it was done and obviously I'll let you pop that one in. So I'll just push that down. There we go. So it was a similar idea. The detail bar was really, again, it was a bit of a showcase of, um, you know, a little bit about what the, the brand stands for. Um, you know, if you think about obviously the car car detailing uh, scene, there's a lot of brands out there, but you, you can really easily narrow it down to about over 95% of them. We're not really competing with them directly because um, we make our own product, the majority of them don't, and that's fine, you know, that's absolutely fine because it's like any industry, healthcare, etc. There's a lot, it's all the same sort of scenario. However, as a manufacturer, we have full control over the quality, the creative side of the business. So yeah. if we want to make something happen, we can make it happen. That's it. Um, and there's a number of other benefits, obviously, but um, it's not always the easiest road to go down. It takes a, a few years to develop and, and, you know, to have, not take formulas out of a book, but to actually develop them from scratch and make something that's, that's genuinely better and different. Yeah. That does take time and it has taken time. So, um, right, so the preservative is in. Now, what we're going to do with this one, I'll, I'll add this in. So this is actually an emulsifier, this one. Um, well, I'll be honest with you, what do you think it is? I honestly can tell you. So it's actually, it's a bit of IPA. Right. All right, so what we're going to do, because it's going to go really heavy with the fragrance, so right. we're going to put this in and this is going to help to solubilise the fragrance oil and allow it to blend with the product. Now, we don't actually use this in the rapid detailer formula normally. Okay. Um, but when we make these at this scale, um, what we tend to find is because people want it to be really, really strong smelling, um, yeah. having that heavy load of fragrance oil, because fragrances are oil based, we put this in just to help break it down. Now you don't get the smell of alcohol in the product, but it, it does help and it yeah. means that your product remains stable. Yeah. Obviously, like we discussed earlier with the high shear mixer, as you can see, this isn't a high shear mixer. So um, this, is, this is slow, um, very slow. <laughs> so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball this one, but I know how much to put in. Just put the humbug channels all the way in. Eyeballing it. Eyeballing it. No funnel going, eyeballing and experimenting. Let's turn that up a touch there. Okay, so we're just about, just about there. So, we've got, how many ingredients is that now then? Three, four. Yeah, so there's two to begin with, so about five in total here. Oh, yeah. um, we've got a colour and a fragrance, so it'll be seven in total for this right. one. So a basic product, but a really effective one. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn the stutter off. I'm just going to give this a little shake by hand. Hopefully you can see that there. There's a sort of it's a really nice white product. As white as it gets, really. It's yeah. nice that, yeah. So the next one, this is where I'm having nothing to do with this. All right. Right, this. <laughs> right, so you wanted orange dye. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do, so we, we mix our own dyes here as well. Oh, right. As you can see by his well-written label, <laughs> this is one from the detail bar. Uh, usually we have them in a different kind of container, but mm -hmm. um, we basically, we, we take, we buy pigments and powders 
um, from massive suppliers yeah. um, and then we blend them here exactly to what we need so right. uh, there's a couple of exceptions so sometimes if we're doing like tests on, on waxes and so we don't do a lot of wax tests anymore but um, we would use sort of oil based ones that we buy in just for simplicity but for the manufacturing like the, the bulk the, the processing and stuff we right. mix everything up and what I'd say that's always told me that this is not the strongest orange so oh. um, normally with some of them a one drop to turn that thing dark orange I would be very, go into this very cautiously, yeah, tiny amount, oh, tiny <laughs> and bear in mind it'll take a couple of seconds or so for yeah. the colour to distribute through the product. So it's spinning at the right kind of speed. Um, I'll let you just very, very cautiously pour that in. Oh, yeah. furrow. Like. See, this is awkward because I'm left handed. Oh, he went for it. <laughs> nah, I never went. Look at I'm thinking about now. I'm thinking a dark orange. That's actually that's quite a vibrant orange. That yeah. Is, isn't it? Jeez. Now, the thing you've got to remember with because the product's white yeah. and not clear, you're not going to get that like popping yeah. orange mm. colour. But it'll always have a sort of like a pastel kind of look to it. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? It looks wrong. It's a pretty good orange, I think so. It's quite vibrant, isn't it? Yeah. It can always have more quickly if you want. I think, I think that looks okay. It's not really getting it's much of an orange now. You can lift it up and have a look here. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty orange. orange. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, on camera, that so looks pretty orange. Zero smell, really. Nothing. Get that spinning again. One last time. So. When it comes to fragrance, we can't reverse this, so yeah. you need to get this right the first time. Um, so what are you thinking? We've got. I'm, I'm thinking the um, the watermelon and bubblegum. Water, by the way, that's a quite a good option. Watermelon and bubblegum. So I'm thinking that. this one is watermelon sorbet, mm. actually. And again, it's not one that we normally use, so this will definitely be a one of one. I'll let you have it because I have not put much right, that. That's fine, no problem. So, we don't need much of this. What we'll do is we want to go maybe a touch more of the watermelon, purely because the bubblegum is a slightly stronger smell and it'll overtake it if we don't have enough watermelon yeah. in there. Ah, that's probably the right amount, what do you think? Again, this will be... Oh, that smells good. Yeah, that smells good. No, be, this is, it's going to happen in stages, so what we'll do now, uh, again, we can't reverse this, so... Um, the bubble gum is going to have to be done tiny amount, tiny amount until you're happy with the combination. So, let's see, we'll take the stopper out of this one. This is where it's tricky. A little bit on the side there, but that's fine. Let's swivel that around. Spin our back on. You can Ooh. smell that. Oh, see what you think of that. Yeah, I think that. I think that's uh, enough watermelon. I think yeah, it's enough. Do you want to have a little bit more watermelon? A wee bit more yeah. watermelon. Yeah. I see, even it that, does smell good. That tiny wee drop. It's starting to already drown mm. it out, isn't it? Yeah. Right, that's good. A bit more watermelon. It does. Look, it looks a lot more orange to back here. Yeah, it's actually a nice colour. Yeah, that smells good. Yeah. You you have a smell good. You like watermelon stuff, don't you? Oh, it's mega. Nice. That's brilliant. Right. So a little bit more of the secret ingredient, just to get it up to the five hundred mark. that for five minutes just to make sure everything's mixed correctly and we'll get it poured into a bottle. Nice. Hello. Charlie's super impressed with the quick detailer. It looks amazing. But now we've been in the lab and we've seen where the products are tested, developed. This is where all the ideas come together. This is where they sample other fragrances, mixtures and get the testing done. Um, they then go on to batch mixing. Now in that first room you've seen a bit of the, the machine, what do they call it again? 
the machine that came no, down at the big, ceiling. Big, uh, mixy thing. The big mixy thing. The big mixy thing. Yeah. So once your products have been mixed up in the lab and they're ready to be bottled, they come over to here. And this machine here, I think Michael said this was about 25 grand worth of equipment just to do the bottling. They can bottle two at once. So it gets bottled here, slips onto this conveyor belt which spins the cap on. As you can see here, there's a load of bottles here that are ready for labelling. They were just waiting on some labels coming. Once this machine here has spun the cap on them, they come down the conveyor belt here. As you can see here, Michael's doing some rapid detailing at the moment. This goes through here, spins round the wee label maker, and ejects it out the other side, ready to go on the shelf. And they're shipped like this without triggers, just to prevent leaks. Yeah. Basically, so you get the trigger separately. Brilliant. Unless you're buying it in store, obviously. Like yeah. Auto Parks, for example. Yeah. They'll have the trigger already put on it. Brilliant. Yeah. And this, this machine's rapid. I just seen how quick it came through. Is it? I think you were saying about a thousand to fifteen hundred every hour. Yeah, maximum of fifteen hundred an hour. Uh, obviously, just now it's not set up. Uh, usually, everything works hand yeah. in hand. Um, I'm just manually feeding them through there, but normally it's a case of you know two bottles at a time are getting yeah. filled, they're getting put straight down. Yeah. Um, everything's done timed, so you know we're, we've got about maybe nine to twelve seconds to fill the two bottles there, depending on the product that will go through here, and everything's all coordinated. So right. you have one person manning this area and another person here taking everything off and putting it into stock boxes, and then either in the stock room or it's going out for an order. Brilliant. So that's awesome. And the finish is perfect, always. <clears throat> it's not too bad, and I think it's probably a good chance to mention about the um, recycled packaging. Um, now, obviously, these bottles here, they look a little bit, they're not as vibrant as they once were, and that's like yeah. I explained earlier on. Um, there's a, a law come into force in the last 12 months, which means every clear bottle like this yeah. has to have a minimum of 30% You can see it on QDX. Can I grab a QDX and yeah, show yeah, them? Yeah, go for it, yeah. Look at me just running into the storeroom like I want to play. But yeah, as you guys know, QDX Ceramic is one of your favourites. And you've seen the bottles on our shelf. It's a pure brilliant white colour. But like Michael said, on the new bottles, if you turn them round, they've got a kind of milky brown haze to them, haven't they? It's almost like uh, it's, it's like the plastic has like a, a dark tint to it. Yeah. Almost, yeah. And that's basically because of the uh, recycled material in there. So it's, yeah. these have thirty percent of that plastic has come from another recycled packaging source. Yeah. Um, now the downside to that is that the, the bottles are no longer clear like they used to be. Um, but we do have a solution to that. Right. So we're going to be obviously. We're going to um, show you soon. We're going to be yeah. We're going to be revealing in in due course. But yeah, basically the brand's getting a little bit of a facelift. Um, so yeah. everything uh, yeah, all all for the the right reasons as well. So yeah, and you might see a sneak peek of that towards the end of this video. So stay tuned. You keep yeah. everything before it goes through the back, so you've got everything in here. There's everything. a good selection. There's some things that are not on the website yet as well. Things like Synergy Boost, um, the larger size, the two and a half litre here. Right. So this has been in, in stock here for about two months. Um, but oh, that long? <laughs> it's that long, yeah, but we just haven't agreed a release date. With uh, Obviously, when we release something, we can't just decide, right, we're going to do it next week. We need to yeah. make sure that... Uh, our distributors and other people who are selling the product are aware and have enough time to buy it in and plan for it. So um, that one will be released quite soon, but I don't have an exact date at the moment. Um, and there's obviously a lot of waxes in here as well, um, various sizes, there's, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, basically, the stock in here is, is stuff that's been manufactured and comes straight in. Yeah. Uh, like you say, it's a back stock room. And then we have the forward stock room on the other side of the building, which right. is where stock is picked from for website orders straight away. Right. Um, and then this stock here will then go to top up that stock room yeah. every day. Um, guys will come down and refill stuff. So, um, and this this room here is, is getting bigger all the time. As you can see, we've had to we've got a, a modified doorway here. <laughs> uh, there is actually a door a double doorway through there. You can't right. really see. Yeah. Uh, that's why the light switch is on the other side of the room because. Right. 
usually coming normally, that way. Yeah, yeah, normally. Um, this whole factory here um, used to be a semiconductor factory in 1975 it opened. Oh, right. Um, and it closed down you know, a number of years ago and it was actually a, basically an employment centre. So right. you, if you were struggling to get work, you would come here. This big room here was like a like an office and it was free computers. You'd come in and do your CV, stuff like that. Oh, right, okay. Um, the feedback from some of the people, because actually one of the guys who came here works here now. Right. Um, it wasn't a very popular venue, I think. Right, right. <laughs> so um, I don't think they had a great success rate. I don't know. But anyway, they, they closed down uh, a few years ago, so we um, we took over the building basically. But sure. there's there's a lot of room for. I mean, it's been it was an open factory. Now it's been made into offices. There's rooms, right. but all of these walls they're not load bearing, so they can knock them down and just uh, open the place up as we as we go. Excellent. Um, loads of room for for new things for expansion. Absolutely. Um, and one thing I would say, there's always something something new happening here. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. There's mm -hmm. as always, guys. My favourite product, <coughs> Synergy Two. There's plenty on the shelf. There's some through the back that I've already seen as well. So, so. keeping that in stock is difficult. Yeah. Um, so we we make this in batches of either two hundred or five hundred. Right. Um. Now we sometimes get stockist or like uh, we've got a distributor in France. He takes usually between two and, and four hundred at a time. Right. So um, we're very low on that at the moment. So yeah. that will be getting made tomorrow or Monday. Because right. um, we I think we've probably got less than sixty in stock at the moment. Yeah. Um. Because there'll be some in there with the ceramic coatings. There's the other stock room where they get checked and labelled by hand and stuff as well. Those yeah. ones. So we had a sneak yeah. in there already, didn't we? Did you? Yeah. yeah. We did yeah, have a real look in there. I I think it's. It's a good thing to do. So when it comes to waxes, for example, obviously there's a few different types, and you know you could argue a wax is a wax, but each one of these has its own purpose, yeah, um, and it, and its own kind of unique experience when you use it. Because I think when you use a wax, it's a bit more of a, um, it's a more kind of long term experience. You know, it takes you a couple of hours to go around the car and yeah. and do it. So um, when you buy one of these, we want to make sure it's absolutely perfect. So these ones here have gone through the process, but. These are made in the lab, so not down here, but up at the other side of the building. Okay. Um, poured to perfection, so Primo gets poured five times. So right. by five times, there'll be five layers of wax in here. Oh, right. Basically, we heat it up and then cool it back down to the right temperature. Um, right. And that, essentially, the reason for that is to stop shrinkage. Yeah. So the last thing you want is to open this and it's all shrunk in and cracked and everything. It doesn't look nice. Right. It doesn't affect the product. It works yeah. the same, but it's it's not not nice. You know, like a big valley in the top of it when you open the lid. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so these are all handmade. I mean, it doesn't matter how big Infinity Wax gets. I mean, we are talking earlier how it started in a garage, essentially, as a project. Yeah. Um, these are still handmade. They're hand-checked and hand-finished. So all of these um, go into that other room, which you guys sneaked into earlier yeah. on. Um, <laughs> they're checked by somebody else. So the, the other person hasn't had any involvement in making the wax, but they'll check it, make sure it meets the standards of um, presentation, basically, yeah. and then hand-apply all the labels as well. So... Right. Um, these ones here have no automatic or automated processes at all. Brilliant. So, um, we were actually saying that earlier about how Michael sold the Supra to start Infinity Wax, and that was for your garage at home. It was, yeah. So um, that's a tough one to. Fifteen hundred pounds for a Supra. <laughs> Mark Mark for Supra as well. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen hundred pounds. I sold that for. That's nearly a hundred thousand pound car now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually went to Driftland. Did it? Yeah, because it, so to be honest, um, at that point I worked away a lot, so I worked in the petrochemicals, I was away all the time, because right. I was in a, a, a project based team, so it was myself and one other guy, um, we were part of, there was seven teams, and we if there was a problem on either an offshore platform, um, or a refinery, anywhere in the world, because yeah. um, we worked for multiple oil companies, it wasn't just like, a, it wasn't just like Shell, although yeah. most of the work was with Shell, but, right. um, we would be sent so I could get a phone call and be like, tomorrow 4 a.m. you're at the airport going to Saudi. Right. How long for? Nobody knows, you know. So it was just one of those ones, you know. Yeah. Um, so what we did, there was a, it was great, but at the same time, you couldn't really have much of a life. So I would come yeah. back and I'd work on the Supra because it was a bit of a project for me as well. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, I did have a bump with it, and that's kind of how this happened. So right. um, I was attempting to drift on an open diff. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to say too much because. Uh, but basically, I hit a lamp post. The lamp post is right. fine, and uh, but yeah, the car came off a little bit uh, worse awesome, than the yeah. lamp post. Yeah, so I, I fixed it. I put a crash bar on it, a bumper and stuff like that. But yeah. 
it just ended up sitting there doing nothing for a few months and right. um you know the calipers were seized and all that there was all sorts of minor issues with it to yeah. be honest you know it sits and lies for ages and then it starts to get that's, expensive that's doesn't it? the worst thing you can do like yeah. RA is just leave them sitting lying it's when they just deteriorate yeah so yeah always keep them running always so i mean that that car for me was like a, that was a dream car i always wanted a supra yeah um you know probably stemming from the sort of fast and the furious days you know but um it, it was good i enjoyed the car um and i did a lot with it but then obviously it just needed so much money and time putting into yeah. it i sold it to somebody who, who was the guy was desperate for it you know and back then you could get a supra for three four grand right so for me at the time it was like you know that's mental to think about because yeah. now they're all like a scabby one's fifteen thousand yeah. pounds. Yeah, yeah. So okay. like back at that point, it was the you maybe remember this is the blue paper. Aye. Yeah. Aye. So it was the the, the blue paper, right? I can't yeah. was it, uh, I can't remember the name. It was like Scott ads or something. Yeah, you used to get a yellow one as well, which Actually. was the something advertiser. I can't yeah. remember what it was called. A lot of them were free at the petrol station. You used to go in and grab one at the petrol station. That's right, yeah, that's right. Big car section at the back. I yeah. bought a few escorts and stuff out of there in my time. <clears throat> so that's where the Supra came from. I bought right. it from a guy in Livingston. Right. Um, don't remember his name, but he was in like Craig's Hill area. Yeah. He was like, he needed the money. I got it for, for a good price. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was a great car. I don't regret selling it. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I got my enjoyment out of the car. I mean, um, but yeah, five hundred pounds of that, fifteen hundred. I, I bought labware, glassware, yeah. some specialist equipment. Which I mean, it was basic stuff. But I was only making waxes. I wasn't doing any of that stuff at that point. Yeah. Just wax, one wax is all I did. Um, and super gloss was the first one, which is here. So it's now super gloss plus. Right. Um, mainly because the formula is a lot more advanced than what it was back yeah. then. I had like five ingredients. Right. Um, and I and I made it. So the, the key thing about when I made this, it wasn't just a case of chuck a few things together and try it. I made, designed a formulation calculator. Right. So I did that before I even touched anything. Okay. Um, now, the reason that that's important is, so if you think about, say for example, the original wax has five materials in it. Yeah. Um, the molecular weight, and I don't want to bore anybody, but if you have one milliliter of water, it weighs yeah. one gram. Yeah. Right. Now, if you're measuring carnauba wax, it might not necessarily weigh. So one gram of carnauba might actually melt and make two and a half milliliters. Right, okay. So you have to know the molecular weight for the materials. Yeah. So if you think, right, I'm gonna put 40 grams of carnauba into this wax, it might be way too much, way too hard, doesn't work. So I fine-tuned the actual, um, the formulation, like the calculation of it yeah. first. And then went in with a, to be honest, I didn't have a lot of knowledge about waxes because I didn't, wasn't really, uh, it was pipework coatings I looked at at work. Yeah. It wasn't in to do with wax, but I had a, a bit of a base knowledge to start from. Yeah. Um, and using that calculator, I was very, very quickly able to get, you know, I started off my first ever wax was usable. It was okay. Right. I mean, even now it's probably better than some of the budget things you'd buy at Halfords. Yeah. You know, that original one still. Yeah. Um, and then very quickly, based on that, handing them out at car shows and car meets and stuff like that, you know, I was just getting feedback and people were loving it. I was actually quite surprised because, you know, back then I was just like, you know, it's something, you know, when you create something from from nothing, from scratch, from just an idea, um, yeah. nine times out of ten, it's probably not going to work. But yeah. people seem to like this. So, right. you know, I thought, great, you know, and then eventually started an eBay shop, um, which was just a bit of a sideline. It was doing a couple of grand a month on eBay. It was ticking away. Yeah. You know, it's just... Uh, money to buy car parts and all the rest yeah, of it, you know. Uh, I was, you know, working offshore anyway, so it was just a little bit of a, you know, funds of hobbies and everything. Yeah. Um, and it, until that point where Infinity Wax started to rapidly outgrow what I was doing at my job, and, and I'd already, at age 21, I'd kind of reached the upper limit of what I could do, so I was kind of getting paid the most I could ever be paid in that job. Right. Um, and there was, a, you know, at that time I had to make a decision. Do I actually want to keep doing this do i want to be you know passed from pillar to post traveling the world sounds great but in reality yeah. when you're stuck on a flight for 23 hours being coughed on you know it's just yeah it's not yeah. ideal um i had a few few brushes with death out in some of these countries as well right um diseases i had yeah. dengue fever and all such things so oh, right. um i got to the stage where i was like right do you know what like i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna make a decision and yeah. And go for it like so and this this happened 10 years later 10, 10 years nine, later. 10 years later yeah and funny um, wax is growing and 500 pound investment was good yeah i would yeah. say so <laughs> i think 
if if you truly believe in something and you know that you're doing the right thing, yeah, then I think eventually you'll get there. Yeah, and I think the key thing for us as well is that we actually make everything. So yeah. for me to, I mean, at age twenty one, I was eight, making about six hundred pounds a day. Right. Right, offshore, so which is, is good money, even good money now, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, the guys I worked with thought I was insane. They're like, "You're going away to mix pots of wax in a garage? Like, what the hell are you playing at?" Like, yeah. They, they, they thought I'd lost it, you know. Um, whereas now, you know, we're miles apart in terms of they're they're still stuck and moaning every day about their job and all that. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm here now. Although there's obviously good days and bad days at any yeah. job, but. You know, I'm doing something that I'm genuinely passionate about and interested yeah, in. Something that you love. Um, yeah. yeah, and and I'm still, even though things are a lot different now than what they were, we're still able to create something from an idea right up until the the end result product. You know. Yeah, and, and like we've seen today with the tire candy. So, exactly, and yeah. that's why we've always used the Infinity Wax products as well because we obviously the products genuinely are amazing, absolutely brilliant. Because we used to use Auto Finesse before that. We've used Auto Glim. It was when we moved back to Scotland. Mm-hmm. And we teamed up with Auto Parts who were helping us out. They stock a lot of Infinity Wax stuff. So we naturally, yeah. oh, this stuff looks good. So you start buying mm-hmm. that and one product led to another. And you know, mm-hmm. stuff's really good. But before you know it, and you've seen our shelf in the garage, it's all Infinity Wax. So, uh, the guys at Auto Parts are great. I mean, they're almost like a bit of a hidden gem because, you know, there's there's a lot of people, and especially on the east side of Scotland, they're not yeah. that aware of them. But it's an amazing place. You've got everything you could ever need yeah. Them, to be honest, yeah. yeah like i said to you before if you use the contact details in our description below they'll get you car parts you can get infinity wax stuff they've got everything you need so it's well worth remembering that they're there but there's maybe just a little example of one of the finished waxes yeah so as you can see this super gloss plus this is one of our kind of budget waxes to be honest right um, retail price is about 35 quid yeah on this but usually you can get them for about 32 yeah um you know, but we it doesn't matter if it's one of the high end two hundred pound synergy waxes, you know, this this has been made with genuine care. Yeah. And you know, it's been finished to perfection. I mean it's and it smells really nice. It does. Yeah. It smells really good. Um, so I think there's still a place for waxes. I mean, I know like I was saying earlier in the UK, yeah. I would say wax is dead, but certainly we don't sell anywhere near as many hard or paste waxes as we used to. Um, however, in Eastern Europe and, and other parts of Europe, we do sell quite a lot. Um, but certainly, you know, things like Synergy Boost, the ceramic range. I think the ceramic range has been like a massive hit for us purely because it's outdoor friendly. Yeah. Um, and the easiest way to explain that is Synergy 2, if we ignore, the, if we ignore these, because these are the professional ones. Yeah. Synergy 2 and Synergy Light, they have basically have a sealant built into them. Yeah. Now, when you apply that outside, uh, and it rains normally a ceramic coating that's it's game over water yeah. spots everywhere you've got to machine polish the car and start again yeah um or keep it indoors for like 12 hours 24 hours for the ceramic to actually bond to the paint and cure a yeah. little bit before you at least take it outside that's it with this you get a wave there's a way around that it's like a safety net because you put it on the car the polymer sealant bleeds through it and it only lasts for seven to ten days but it's yeah. enough to get it to its first wash Right, and so that, that's that allows it to cure and yeah. go off so that the sealant, the ceramic coating stands Think about it like layers, you know, you put it down and, and you can actually see it. So if you put it down quite thick, you'll see the polymer bubbling through. Right. Um, if you look out for that, you'll yeah. see it. Um, and basically when you spread, when you're leveling that coating off, all you're doing is you're just sort of gently wiping this polymer over it. Um, your base layer coating is adhering to the paintwork and they all take they take hours. I mean, that takes yeah. three to seven days for that to fully cure. Yeah. They all do it. There's no way around that. Doesn't matter what what you do. So the only way to get around that problem is to add something over the top of that base layer to protect that while it's doing its job, basically. Yeah. Um, and that's why that's the one we choose to use, um, because this your channel is all about being DIY. We try to encourage you guys to do as much as you can, and by far the Synergy Two coating is a hundred percent DIY friendly. You can do it in your drive. Your garage, wherever, it's growing stuff. I mean, likewise, Synergy Light was obviously the first DIY one that we released. Um, you know, and that was 1999. It's yeah. enough to do five cars. Right. I mean, and then we do even cheaper on trade if we've got a trade account. So it's like, it's, it's so cheap. Yeah. If you think of a ceramic coating, what do you think? 500 quid, 600 quid? Aye, aye. If I, if I told you for £2, £2.50, you can ceramic coat your car. Yeah. You would think I was just talking it, nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we don't shout about that because, to be fair, sometimes if you think a product is that cheap, sometimes it's oh, there's not, it's maybe not a good product. Yeah. 
um, and I can understand that, you know. Uh, yeah. But when it comes to the guys that are out there on the tools or on the buckets, so to speak, yeah. uh, the mobile valeters that need something that, that you know, they can charge 100, 150 quid in yeah. and around that price range to put a one year coating on. That's it. And it's yeah. costing them, say, two pounds yeah. for the product. You know, okay, a little bit of panel wipe and stuff as well, a couple of applicators, but probably all in five, six quid to coat yeah. the car. Um, you know, and it's a product that we know works, it's robust, it, it yeah. lasts outside, uh, and it's got a wide envelope of application ranges and temperatures, so it's very, yeah. very forgiving. Um, that's putting money on people's tables, to be honest, that product. Yeah. And there's so many people relying on that now. Right. Um, so from that point of view, it's not just a good product, like, yeah, it beads well, etc. It's actually something that's genuinely helping the professional, like the one-man band balloters out there, yeah. who have never had anything like that. Yeah. It's genuinely helping them out. So. Yeah. That's always a good thing to see as well. So guys, once your products have been through all of that process of being made, being bottled, being labelled into the stockroom, once you place your order, it all comes through into the back stockroom. Michael's in here now opening up your package. Um, this is a brand new label, so it's gone through a slight rebranding. We're getting some new labels on the bottles. But in here you've got your big five litre bottles. Is that the new one? So new ones, yeah. That's a new tyre candy labels. <clears throat> One litre tyre candy. My favourite stuff. stuff. requested this stuff. Yeah. Um, and obviously these are a peel and reveal. So yeah. if you're out with the UK, we sell it in France and Germany for example, your local language is underneath the label. Right. It's perfect for everyone. Awesome. I think the colours look great. You've got the, obviously the background pattern there and everything as well. Yeah, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Entire candy coming in a litre is amazing because that's my favourite product. We well, look at us filming out. all the unreleased stuff. I know, I know. Good timing that, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, it would be good to hopefully get this on a, on a bottle today. Yeah. Um, maybe that get you the first ever bottle if that would be good. Oh, that'd be awesome, oh, yeah. That'd be sick, yeah. yeah. We, can, we couldn't use it, we'll need to put it on the shelf in the office. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in here, guys, this is where all your older orders are processed. So, you've got your five litres up here. All your one litre bottles, everything's over there, your gloves, all your polishing pads and everything are in stock. So everything you need is here, it then gets packed up, straight in the DHL for next day deliveries, Royal Mail Track 24 hour. Everything leaves the back door and that's it, your Infinity Wax products are on the way. So Michael mentioned earlier the rebranding of the product and showed the new, the new labels for Tire Candy, one of my favourite products. Uh, Michael's actually put the first ever label on the first one litre bottle and Charlie's going to fill the first ever one litre tyre yeah. candy bottle. And this is like the first one with the, the darker pink in it? It is, yeah. So uh, as you can see there, um, the actual product. Um, so we, we mix tyre candy in these barrels with a high shear mixer because it's, it's quite a difficult product to work with because it's obviously very thick. Um, but as you can see, it is a darker pink pink. Usually it was quite a really light pink actually. Yeah. But it goes nicely with this new label that we've designed. So um, so this is genuinely the first ever one litre tyre candy bottle. As you can see, we've not even set the machine up here to cope with the size <laughs> of the bottle. So um, we've got it on an angle. What we'll need to do is if you give that a press just now, that should, you can see that we did a wee test fill earlier. Oh, perfect. Look at oh, that. that was close. <laughs> I've seen you get a little bit panicked there. Look at that. You were ready to work the bottle. That out. is actually bang on because, like we, as we already explained earlier, there should be a slight air gap at the top of these yeah. bottles. So it'll drip tray there. So there we go, the first ever one litre bottle of tyre candy, filled by Charlie. We need, yep. get, we need to get Michael signing it. Yeah, I can get, get a couple, get Ollie to sign it as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, this formula here is one of uh, one Ollie worked a lot on, to be fair. Right. Um, and to be, it's a great product, you know. Um, yeah. So again, it's uh, you know one of these things where you know you have an idea and you just don't stop till you get it exactly yeah. the way you want mm -hmm. it, you know. So uh, what we'll do is we'll get you a push pull cap put on that, and then that'll be good to go. We'll get it signed. Nice. As well. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Around here at the rear of the factory, and we've got a couple of units around the back that are attached to the same building but separated. Um, so this one in here, this is where um, anything that gets manufactured in the room next door. This is these all these products are, are finished, ready to go uh, materials that the guys will then fill. So normally the stuff here is going into five liters or or twenty liter drums. Um, so as you can see, there's a number of finished products. So we've got some of the million range, the uh, apple pre-wash. Yep. Um, you can see we've got about five hundred liters in there. 
Uh, Millions Cola Shampoo, an all time favourite of mine. Absolutely love the stuff. I don't think um, We've never tried the million stuff yet, have we? No, because I've still got a load for the last order, so I've not actually ordered any million stuff yet. So this, I mean, this is still the original batch that we made. Right. Um, they, were, they were only sold in 500 ml bottles. Mm. Right. Um, so we've, we've sold, you know, a good few of them, to be honest. Um, but things are, uh, we've got a lot of interesting things happening with this range. Um, we're only just scratching the surface of this. Right, so, okay. Um, but yeah, you can see what Synergy Refresh. Um, a really interesting and almost uh, unheard about shampoo that's so it's an acidic shampoo right uh, good for restoring ceramic coatings that are a little bit uh, well, half dead or right um, a bit clogged up um, but it's good that it it'll remove water spots a bit as well and stuff like that like light ones yeah um, spotless plus apx incinerate so we've got everything pretty much in here um, and obviously we've got the, the house forklift this one stays indoors <laughs> uh, electric one, right? Um, so obviously we just we need to move the IBCs up and down something mm. like that. Um, but yeah, all these very particular. With, this is never allowed outside. Otherwise, the wheels get cleaned and brushed and everything. Oh, right. we need to keep the rubber floor as uh, <laughs> as clean as possible. Yeah. Sure enough, you know. Last thing you want is any dirt going near the finished product. You know? Yeah, that's it. That's true. Um, so this room stays as clean as, as possible, and as you can see here, we've got one of the uh, pallet boxes. So this year, um, more than likely, this will just be going out tomorrow morning to a supplier. Um, so we've got Citrus 5 liter, probably one of our best sellers of all time. Yeah. Um, this has been filled this afternoon, and um, again, it'll be counted, packed, ready to, to go yeah. in the van, forklift in and away tomorrow. Do you know um, the first time we ever got Citrus pre-wash? Um, we didn't realise it was dilutable, did we? No, we, no, put no. It, we just yeah. Spraying, spraying an Audi TT with it. So that, that's something with the new style labels. We are going to make a point of um, stating that it's a concentrate. Right. Because there's certain products like Tar and Glue, for example. Some people have asked, can you dilute that? Well, the answer is basically no. It's not even a water-based product. So if you put water in that, it's going to split and you know it's a solvent-based product. Yeah. So, um, we're going to make it even easier for people to understand a little bit more about the products and, and how they work. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's another, so this is probably all part of the same order, so there's another part box here, we've got 20 litres of shampoo, um, and there shampoo. is some interior detail of 5 litres of this. So this will likely go out, so we can fit uh, we can fit six of these in the van, Right. but not when they're as full as that because of the yeah. weight, obviously. Yeah. Um, we can do three of them when they're fully loaded, basically. Yeah. So, so that'll be going out tomorrow morning. Um, and yeah, basically we, we just configure this exactly how we need it. Empty bottles and packaging are down there. We've got bulk storage up across the road, and we'll just uh, you know we'll work through them here. We've got several ways of filling them. Um, the pneumatic machine here is really more for uh, the really thick products. Right. We usually use ho like uh, wide bore hoses for the kind of the thinner products. Right. Um, but something like your you know your shampoos, your um, wax off shampoos, really thick. So you know. You really need something to suck it out the IBC and draw it out. So that's what we use the pneumatic pumps for, for that. Um, so yeah, basically any of your kind of cleaning products or your detergent based products, they will be made next door. They'll come in here because the, the, the temperature is not as important. So it does yeah. get a little bit cooler in here in the winter time. Uh, but there is heating in here, so it doesn't get like to freezing or anything, but it gets to maybe 12 degrees or something. Um, so yeah, all, all your kind of, um, any of the cleaners, pre-washes, shampoos, they, they will all be kept in here, packaged and filled in here, and then they'll ultimately end up in that stock room that we saw earlier yeah. on, basically. Awesome. So, so what's, uh, you mentioned tar and glue earlier, what's the secret ingredient in tar and glue? Because your Infinity Wax tar and glue is by far the best tar and glue I've ever used, hands down. Well, it wouldn't be a secret. No, yeah, exactly. you can't, you're, you're using the, fr the pressure of the camera to try and get no, some I information. Don't. I think the only thing I could say about it is some of the commercially available tar and glues, um, they, they actually use kerosene or a percentage of kerosene in the formula. Right. Um, which is fine because kerosene naturally lubricates a little bit, which yeah. is, is a good thing. And um, I mean, it kind of works a little bit like WD-40 in a sense. So it's, you get that kind of oiliness to it. Um, but it will clean the paintwork and it will help to dissolve the tar. Right. Um, what we want to do is, you know, we understand that less contact is better. So we want our one to be instant action. We want to be able to rinse the tar off 
90 percent of it anyway yeah. because you're not going to get it all like realistically um, but it means that so we use actually a, to lubricate it we use a solvent which is actually a metal working fluid and right. that's what it's originally for um, and it creates a lubricating barrier but it's not oily yeah so it's like a dry lubricant um, and essentially the key ingredient so the thing that really attacks the tar yeah um, as again it's an industrial it's solvent <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah it's it's a secret yeah. but it's the best solvent for removing tar as soon as you spray it that. it yeah. starts to bleed immediately yeah it's good it's very yeah. good very good i mean that's the, the, the really the whole idea behind this brand right is that we're taking products that are professional strength or industrial strength whatever you want to call it um, as, as strong as they possibly can be we take them make the formula safe so that anybody can use it if you've never used you know an industrial strength product before and you yeah. forget to dilute it like you just said with citrus you forgot to dilute it does it damage your paint no no exactly so um, yeah, it's quite we that was it a bomb find out the DD. It, it, it did take a while, it was soapy, but it, it cleaned off well. It got all the moss off it. Yeah, so it, yeah, it did a good job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that, that's the idea. So there was a lot of, you know, when Infinity Wax was first started, there was, there's loads of brands out there that do what I would describe as retail products. So something yeah. you could walk into, uh, you know, I'll use Halfords as an example. I'm not going to mention any specific brands in it, but you could walk in, you could buy a product and you can just spray it and use it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, nine times out of ten, these products are retail strength, so they tend to be, um, I don't want to use the word diluted, but they're not as strong as the professional strength product. Yeah? So it's a weaker alternative. Uh, re the reason for that being is safety, because you know um, these products tend to be made, some of these formulas are, are getting on for like 10, 15 years old. They're not the most cutting edge out there, and they rely on some of the kind of older, more aggressive chemicals to work. Um, and then you've got the, on the flip side, you can buy from, you know, you get, you can go to suppliers or there's reps that go around in vans uh, selling industrial chemicals for trade use or professional use only. And they very clearly state that. Uh, again, the reason for that is they're strong. And if, you know, they're not used correctly, they could damage either yourself or the, the vehicle potentially. Um, now, I know that's not true in every case, but, you know, there's, they're all stickered up like that. And yeah. some of these are, again, they're made from, some of them are made from caustic material, acidic, products i mean um and again they work well and that's fine you know at the end of the day if people are happy with what they're using that's great but yeah. there is always a better way to do something and um essentially that's what we've looked to do is to take these aggressive chemicals and find an alternative to them which okay maybe it's a little bit more expensive but because we're making everything here from scratch that cost yeah. it's passed on in the pennies not in the pounds it's tiny yeah that's um, it it might cost and it maybe seven percent more to buy that material in but by the time you break that down into ready to use product cost is minimal yeah um, and the end result is that you know your, your end user your retail customer is getting a product that's as good as what the professionals have but it's also safe um the professionals are getting a product that looks nice smells nice is a joy to work with and it's doing exactly what they need it to do to, to bring the money in to be honest yeah um so it's, it's diversified the range into something that again professionals are relying on and that retail customers um or enthusiasts can you know they can buy it without worrying about any damage or anything you know so yeah um and i think that's it's well demonstrated with you know your uh, rapid detailer and stuff like that i mean obviously the original bottles always had clear labels um and the idea behind that is we wanted to show people what was in the bottle yeah um that that was one of the key key thoughts behind it um and again this product's been a been a game changer to be honest you know and um, going back a few years when we were first introducing this to some of the commercial customers um if you think about you know high-end dealerships garages these kind of guys who are going through quite a lot of product um we come in they've not heard of us before probably and they're like no i've been using xyz for 10 years i'm not interested yeah yeah what we do, it's very simple, right? Our sales, uh, we, we don't uh, rely on pushy sales to, or anything like that. So, um, you know, we're 100, 110% confident in the product. So I just say, look, take this, take that, give them a couple of our key products and say, I'll come back in two weeks, you tell me what you think of it. I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna say anything, you tell me. You're yeah. the professional, you're using it every day. Yeah. yeah. Come back 99% of the time, the guys are on board. This product in particular has been an absolute gateway product Guys that try this, they just cannot get their head around how easy it is. Yeah. You spray it, wipe it, and it evaporates off. 
Yeah. Why, why, do, why don't you have to buff it off? Yeah. There's no solvents in it. It's well, well, in this one there's an alcohol, but yeah. there's no alcohol in the, the other formula. So, I mean, how, how does it work? You know, well, you know, it's... But that's, that's something you keep to yourself, though, or everybody well, would be there. It's as simple as saying, right, a lot of the stuff out there on the market that works well is old hat formula that's been around for years and years and years. Works fine, absolutely fine, nothing wrong with it. But when you make something modern, something that eliminates the problems that these older formulas have, that's when you end up with a new and a really exciting product. Yeah. And that's what we've done. You know, it's we, we look very closely at what issues there are with other products. We try our best to, to make them, you know, something that we, at the end of the day, like this tire candy, as much as it, right, you could say, okay, like, it's a tire dressing. Yeah. Right? People genuinely get excited about using this product because they love the smell, they love the way it goes on. Um, personally, I, I love the look of the product. I think it's, it just ticks all the boxes for me. Um, you know, I actually dry the tires on my car just to speed the process up so I can right. use it. You know? <laughs> um, and that's what it's all about. It's creating products that people not only have to use, but also enjoy using. Enjoy the using, product, yeah. You know, so. Right, so not only do Mike and the team make all their own products, develop them, bottle them, ship them, Michael also designs all the labels himself, everything you use. Is it Photoshop you're using? Uh, so this is Illustrator. Um, right. So to give you an idea, I mean, just what goes into it, it might seem like quite a, a basic concept in a label, but if I just highlight everything there, um, I mean, you can see there's there's quite a lot of layers on it. I mean, all your background patterns, everything like that. Um, there's quite a lot that goes into designing these and they've all got to be done in a, a specific way for the type of print that it's get, gets done on them. Yeah. Because this label is actually two labels sandwiched together, um, it has to be done obviously in a very specific manner, otherwise the printers just start kicking off. So. Yeah. Um, but again, as you can see with the product, it's, uh, you know, it's a nice matte lamination and it looks really, really good. We don't print these in-house, in but obviously we do all the designs here. Um, and they get sent to a company in Wales who does them. Right. Um, so we, we've used a couple of different companies before, but the one in Wales is, is really decent. Um, so yeah, I mean that's, uh, and then the clear ones are even a little bit more complicated because you've got, um, we have to do spot layers with that one. Um, and what that basically is, you have to print white and then you print the label on top of that. Um, and again, if you mess that up, you end up with a label that looks, it's half transparent and doesn't look good at right. all. So. Um, but yeah, we also do um, like the essentially mock-ups, so I'll just quickly open one of those up. Um, so, actually I better not, that's a new product that you can't show you. So, <laughs> uh, tell you what, I'll open up the one litre because I see all of them are a little bit, there's things that can't be shown yet. So, um, so yeah, I use obviously the, the full Adobe Suite to do this, so as you can see here, this is the tire candy one litre. Um, and it's it's photorealistic as to you know how the product is going to be when you when you get it. Um, it's also very high quality, so it allows you to zoom right in here. Yeah. You can see all the patterns and everything. It allows the customer to see exactly what they're getting on the website as well, um, because this label this is that essentially the the digital label wrapped around a three right. D object. Yeah. Essentially. Um, and again, you know, we can add on backgrounds, we can do all sorts of stuff. So it's great for, um, you know, marketing and stuff like that. We can use these. But it just means that we've got every single thing rather than having to get one of the cameras out and do product photography, we, ha we can actually quite quickly knock one of these up and show right. people how it works. And personally, I think these look a bit cleaner on the website. Um, I mean, and, and again, they're realistic as to, although it's a, a digital render of the product, it looks exactly like the, the product and yeah. if I grab that there you know it, it does look the same you know yeah um, I think sometimes the only thing you could pull out is maybe the color slightly because when you see something on a screen the colors versus yeah. the real life can be slightly different but it's you know it's basically the same thing obviously the, the signatures won't be on all yeah. the other bottles but the first ever bottle there um so yeah so, I mean that's the Essentially, in this room here, obviously, myself and Ollie, we come up with the ideas. Um, we look at what's out there in the market, we look at feedback, and we listen to the guys who do reviews for us. Um, we've got a number of guys that, that we trust with feedback. Um, you know, one of the main guys in the trade would be Sean McCartney right. uh, from MVDs and in Preston. Um, there's, there's nothing 
um, that, that Sean doesn't know about any of these products. He's, he's been actively involved in some of the development and so on as well. Right. Um, we've got a number of uh, reviewers, one guy called Steve in particular has been really, really handy. We've got Tony, uh, he's one of our trainers, Tony Dance. Uh, right. Again, long-term involvement in product development, highly knowledgeable guy. Um, in fact, we sometimes ask, ask him things, you know? Yeah. Um, he's, he's really, really knows his stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've got a really, really good group of people that we can rely on from, you know, professionals right through to consumers who are, they know exactly what they're talking about. Um, and again, we also put things out to people who maybe don't have a lot of experience because we need to get that information as well. Yeah. Um, so once we've come up with these ideas, we're able to, um, you know, to, to get it to the, the concept of where the label's being designed. We need to fully understand what we want the product to do colours of the products, the consistencies, all these kind of things. So before we've even got to that, there will be a product made up, there'll be a yeah. sample that will have been sent for testing and we'll be like 95% or more happy with it. Right. Um, and then once we've got to that stage, we start to work the product around the design because there might be certain additives that won't work well with that colour, for example, right. or whatever. So, um, so essentially it's a full, it's a ground up from an idea right through to the execution yeah. And as you can see, right through to the actual manufacturing, the blending, the bottling. Yeah. Um, and again, we distribute things here directly on the website and send them out to other distributors as well. Right. There's a lot um, goes into it. Loads goes into the process. Yeah. What do you think? It smells good. So that, this, is the, this is the true essence of Infinity Wax, right? right. So Ollie's just wandered through from the lab with a, a, couple, <laughs> of, a couple of new tyre gel, you know? This is where Ollie's creating stuff, always making stuff. And then there's a present for you, Sam. Stop spraying that one. This is a Hugo Boss one or Boss nice. bottle. Oh, nice. Try it. Straight on the skin, look. See? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. That smells good. <laughs> <laughs> you pull the ladies tonight, Sam, tell you that. <laughs> that smells brilliant. That does You're coming away with all the goodies in it. I suppose this is mine. <laughs> it was not for your dad, you know, your dad's going. <laughs> Uh, you, you've got like, you used all the time? No. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, like, obviously, all, all he's got an idea. He's yeah. written away and he's created it into a product. You know, we've all tested it. It might be great. It might not be that good. It might be a tweet. Who knows? We'll find out today. So. Uh, That'll be good, though. I don't think it's a tweet. You could have tied it on the mic, but it was covered in tire candy at the moment. Oh, right, okay. Is the tire candy there? Always. It's the only tire dress that I you use. You know what? <laughs> tire candy is a really good product. It's it does last quite a long time for a, a water-based tire dressing. Yeah. It is essentially water-based tire dressing, but it's one of the best out there. It's quite durable, yeah. um, and it does give a really nice finish. It's not as good as the silicon silicon oil ones, you know, but which is that? Uh, silicon oil. Yeah. That's what yeah. that is. That will give you more shine, though, won't it? That will be more glossy, yeah. but in terms of durability, it will be you know kind of very similar. Yeah. Although when you see that one, that's environmentally friendly, it's more, you know, it's water-based. This yeah. one is obviously hydrocarbons and some yes. silicon polymers in there, and that's what the difference between the two of them are. Yeah. Slightly more glossy, but if you if you prefer tires like not oil finish yeah. with a bit of gloss, that's the best one. That's, that's the reason I like it. I don't like them too matte, I don't yeah. like them too shiny. And that's and tire perfect candy is balance. Just, does it right yeah. in the middle for it's me. It's a perfect balance, that yeah. one. And, it's quite durable as well. We could have just called it SIO2, but... <laughs> yeah, I think just getting that little bit of understanding and knowledge behind what goes into stuff like this is important. And hopefully this video has helped for that, you know? Absolutely. I uh, really appreciate your time coming along. The Michael looks, no, it's looks really awesome. good. The Michael looks great. Yeah. It's obviously coated in Infinity Wax products, so it always looks good. Every car we own is coated in the products. Like, even apart from my Audi, Shane, you've not been looking after my Audi. <laughs> Gave my son a lot of Audi and it's, it came up the other day and it looks terrible. But we'll get that back soon, we'll recoat it, we'll get it all done again. And uh, yeah, massive thank you to you and the team, massive thank you to Ollie for coming up. And uh, it's been awesome getting yep. to know what happens behind the scenes. I don't come up, I'm here all the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs>